There are six core areas of best practices we're going to talk about today. Um, the first one we're going to talk about is the destination being Microsoft 365. That is the target, the goal for every migration, um, even if you're going to something like SharePoint Server Subscription Edition. So we'll talk about that. And then, um, you know, as we kind of go through the other ones, we'll keep readdressing those questions. To Lead is a remote first company based out of Canada. What makes a world class Microsoft 365 internet and digital workplace? So here's our end user representation, our persona, our avatar. And uh, we've heard this a lot, SharePoint sucks. Can't we use something better, more modern, et cetera? And this makes total sense because we've all been often working with a SharePoint version that's extremely dated and old. Um, if you think about it, SharePoint 2009 was essentially when the features were locked for SharePoint 2010. And since then, the classic experiences of SharePoint really haven't had any you know, pages, documents, um, you know, uh, lists and libraries, those haven't really evolved or changed um, in all those years until we hit modern. Modern being essentially the SharePoint Online experiences for uh, sites and lists and pages. So what happens is we have this big delta between what a lot of organizations have implemented, SharePoint 2007, 2010, 2013, and even if you have SharePoint 2016, I'm arguing uh, for the most part, unless you're using those modern pages, um, you're using pretty legacy-oriented technology of at least 10 years old, right? A, a conservative estimate, I was saying, 2009, that's arguably more close to 12 years old. So it makes sense that someone's frustrated, right, using this technology. It makes sense that SharePoint might have a bad rap. Uh, you know, people might not like like SharePoint in your organization. That's fine. What we're going to do is move on to something better um, in the cloud and onwards, right? So whether this is SharePoint Server Subscription Edition or online, we have more modern capabilities, and those modern pages are much richer and have a lot more innovation from the last few years, especially implemented within them. I wanted to talk about this one on being too slow to access directly. Um, this is one where uh, I've certainly heard counterpoints, but I've never heard um, educated ones that we didn't break down really quickly. Uh, so I'm going to really simplify a lot of talk here and just say the service, meaning SharePoint Online, is faster by far, more performant, and a better experience for most not most, almost every end user category, um, then you're going to get on-prem. And that includes for like remote organizations, mining organizations, you know, whatever type of organization you are, I will uh, confidently say that the best place for you to land is SharePoint Online. And so one particular example, since I don't have time to go through all of the differences, is that there's a lot of innovation on performance um, in the way the sync agents and everything else works online that hasn't been necessarily ported in the same way to on-prem. And this makes sense because some of these uh, capabilities rely on cloud cap um, scale uh, considerations, and some of them are things that are, you know, there's light versions of this in SharePoint Server uh, subscription edition, so the latest SharePoint Server edition, but there's a huge delta still in performance benefits. So there is a much better performance story online, and that is getting much, much richer in the way that Fluid, or I guess now we can tall, call it Microsoft Loop publicly. So Microsoft Loop and other things are going to continue to change the pace of uh, performance within the cloud. So those are stories and narratives and opportunities that really exist online um, fundamentally, and not so much on-prem. And so there's lots of other scenarios I can walk through here, but it is faster and more performant to transition to online. So if speed and performance is an issue, not only do you not have to worry about it as much right, when you're on um, online versus on-prem, but it certainly uh, should be and will be faster, assuming you've you know configured things correctly and you don't throw stuff in the middle. Another big one here is that SharePoint Online is integrated with Teams and more. So a lot, a lot of uh, customer feedback that we get from end user communities around dissatisfaction with SharePoint or you know these legacy implementations is that you know there's too many fractured places, fragmented places in which people have to work. You know I have a document management system, I have SharePoint, I have file shares, I have SharePoint, I have you know. Um, you know, other systems record and I have SharePoint, et cetera. And so it's really important to understand that, you know, your long-term story and strategy should be about, I don't necessarily mean consolidation, but certainly integration. And that integration story in the future is almost certainly going to be online focused for you because that's where the integration is pre-built. If I want to have integration with Workday or I want to have integration with ServiceNow or a number of other uh, types of vendors that are very popular within large enterprises, all of those are already pre-integrated within uh, SharePoint. 
SharePoint Online and Microsoft 365 in a variety of ways from dashboard components in Viva Connections to many other uh, you know, rich integration points. So there's no question, you know, if we're looking at integration and we're looking for that sort of digital hub and that connectivity, that's going to be better online. So these are three reasons why, you know, I hope they help you understand why the destination should be SharePoint Online, not SharePoint Server. That doesn't mean that you might not use a transition to SharePoint Server for other reasons. I'll come back to that. But it does mean that your long-term destination, the goal that you have is to get online eventually and, you know, essentially move away from on-prem. All right. Second comment here is about navigation. So this last uh, item that we see here from a, a pain point that we often experience is that it's difficult to move between, they call them portals or sites or places, but you know it's difficult to move between them. And this is really exacerbated when we have a migration because we have some stuff that's online and we have some stuff that's on-prem. And often in some organizations we work with, they might have many SharePoint farms with many SharePoint versions. It's not uncommon for us to see 2003, 2007, 2010, and 2013, 2016, and 2019 all in one customer environment. We've had customers who have 50 plus SharePoint farms and they need to be you know, consolidated and there's real work there before you know, we can rationalize them effectively enough to transition them to online, right? So there's, there's definitely um, reasons that this can be a challenge both from a technical perspective and certainly it can be a challenge from an end user perspective. So uh, as mentioned, um, there's, a, there's a dense 50 minutes of content here. I'm always a big fan of giving you guys too much information and insight. So, um, you know, do expect, you know, to kind of drink from the fire hose. And with that, let me just quickly describe, you know, why I'm here and why I'm talking to you about this particular topic area. 